Today we're going to be talking about the multimeter. It is the most used tool in my toolbox um, for anything electronics. And I only really use like three functions. The first one is looking at the voltage of a source I'm working with or making sure that the voltage is exactly what I expect. Like when I'm dealing with the Arduino projects or if I'm dealing with the the uh, NeoPixel or W20, uh, WS2812s, I need to confirm that I'm not gonna supply too much voltage because they will die. Um, and I gotta make sure that I have enough voltage to actually power them on. So in order to do that, I will get my handy multimeter out. I'll look for this V and I will click it onto there. And then with these two leads, my black one going to my negative, my red one going to my positive, I can actually probe my my circuit to make sure that um, I have the voltage I expect. Now, that initially is set for a DC voltage. That's direct current. Um, then in your house and a couple other circuits is AC current. And in order to switch that for this multimeter, um, I just hit select. And now I can measure the wall outlet, which is something you need to be aware of because you need to be safe, right? You don't just go plugging in random stuff. Um, so like these leads are non-conductive on the back. So I can plug them in the wall, confirm that I have one for, uh, 120 or 115 range uh, alternating current in the wall. But there's some circuits where I need 220 or 440. Um, and that's so I can check with this guy. Um, but most of everything I do is DC voltage. So I'll go back to that. And then I'll use these to meter out different circuits, different uh, batteries even. So if I need to check to see if my battery has a charge, even a double A battery, I'll put this on negative positive and I'll check to make sure I have 1.5 volts. Um, anything less than that means that my voltage or my, uh, my battery is pretty much on its way out or it needs to be recharged if it's a rechargeable battery. The next thing I use more often than anything is continuity. And it's this little thing which most kids may look at as a Wi-Fi signal. Um, it's audio feedback. So with it saying open, it means that these two contacts don't have a, a line between them. So it's a continuity check. So if I put them on something conductive or um, test them to each other, just to make sure for me that I know it's actively on, I get this beep. So anything that's conductive, be it circuit or a fridge, or rims for a car like I can test anything even uh, graphite powder which is really fun um, I can make my own um, hotspot buttons and stuff with that so I just plug it in meter it go um, I do that as a last check for all wiring projects before I flip a switch for powering on because the last thing I want is to make sure my voltage source and my ground are directly connected so if I do this and it doesn't beep, I'm good to start. But if it does beep, that means I have a potential for immediately causing fires, which isn't necessarily good, or blowing a fuse. But if I didn't use a fuse, I could cause a fire. Uh, things to know. And then the last thing that I'll use is the, the resistance check in ohms. And the reason I might use this, although not frequent, is to confirm that resistors I get from like a bargain bin, whatever, actually match the color code on the resistor itself. Um, I've had some that actually don't, which makes no sense to me, but it is something to be aware of. The other thing that I might use this for is if I have a potentiometer, it's like an adjustable resistor, and I have it dialed in to uh, make a circuit or a light the exact intensity that I want and I will take that value from that pot and I'll meter it between the LED and its voltage source and I will see what that resistance is for the LED so I can just get a resistor instead of using the full pot. That way everything's dialed in, the temperature of the room, whatever, for those lights.